Hi, and welcome to Getting Started with Device Shadows. My name is Dave Malone, and I'm a Solutions Architect for AWS IoT. With AWS IoT Core, you can create a persistent virtual version or device shadow of each device that includes the device's latest state so that applications or other devices can read messages and interact with the device. The device shadow persists the last reported state and desired future state of each device, even when the device is offline. You can retrieve the last reported state of a device or set a desired future state through the API or using the rules engine. The device shadow makes it easier to build applications that interact with your devices by providing always available REST APIs. Your application can set the desired future state of a device without accounting for the device's current state and command the device to make up any difference. To follow along, you'll want to have an AWS account and at least one device registered in the device registry. Once you log into the AWS console, go to the device management portion of the AWS IoT console. In the Things tab, I can see the list of my registered devices. If you've been following along, some of our other Getting Started videos, our demo scenario is that we have an Acme device manufacturing company, and we are manufacturing smart thermostats, and we have a thing registered called Thermostat 1. We are building smart thermostats that have temperature controls on the thermostats themselves, as well as the ability to adjust temperature settings through a mobile application or via Alexa smart home skills and we have temperature sensors that you can place throughout your home or office. To begin with, I'm going to go ahead and click on Thermostat 1. Within your Thing view, we're going to click on Shadows in the Thing navigation menu. To begin with, you'll notice that there are no shadows. We're going to start by creating a classic shadow by clicking the Add a Shadow link. To get started with a classic shadow, Leave the name field blank. Click the Add button, and you will now see that we have a classic shadow. Click on the ellipses, and then click View to view and update the shadow document. When you do this, you will see that there are two parts of the shadow state document. You have the desired state with nominal attributes, and the reported state with nominal attributes. We'll come back to the shadow state document in just a moment, but the next thing we're going to do is open up the test portion of the AWS IoT console. To subscribe to topics to receive communication between the device and the device shadow. When updates are made to the shadow state of each device, notifications are published on special topics called reserved topics. Device shadows have a number of reserved topics that we can use to subscribe to for specific updates. The first one we will subscribe to in the update topic structure is the delta topic. Which will receive messages when there is a difference between the desired shadow state and the reported shadow state. Go ahead and enter in this reserved topic structure and click subscribe. To subscribe to additional topics, on the left hand side, click subscribe to a topic. This next, next topic, documents, will give us the entire document so that we can see what state changes have been made across the entire shadow document. We're going to use a third and final topic, the accepted topic to subscribe only when shadow state changes have been accepted by the shadow service. So now you should be subscribed to the three reserved topics and we'll come back here later to see when messages come in through these topics. When you build an IoT application, such as a mobile application to set a thermostat's desired temperature 
This would update the desired state portion of the shadow document, possibly via the RESTful APIs provided for this service. When the desired state changes from the reported state, this causes the shadow service to compute a delta state. So let's go back to the device shadow, and I'll show you how it works. For example, let's say the reported temperature of 75 degrees and you want to reduce the desired temperature to 73 degrees. When I click Save, you'll see that the shadow state has updated, and it has now added a third section, the Delta document. Now we have the desired temperature of 73, the reported temperature of 75, and the Delta temperature which shows the desired temperature. This tells the shadow service that there has been a change to the state and it has to act. Going back to our test portion of the console, we can see that there were messages that came through on the three topics that we subscribe to. When we look at our subscription to the Delta topic, we see in the shadow document that comes through that there has been a change to a desired state of 73 degrees and a timestamp for when the value was changed. This notifies the device to update its local state. In turn, the device would be expected to turn around and update the reported state. Once the thermostat has acted on the command, it would update and provide a matched value for temperature, which would clear out the delta portion of the document. So that's how classic shadows work. Now let's go back to our shadow list for thermostat one. We have our classic shadow, which represents the state and the commands that we want to send down to the thermostat itself. Now, what about the other temperature sensors that you have around the building? How do those interact with our thermostat? We need to be able to keep the state that we are reading in as they periodically report their temperature. This is where we use named shadows. Named shadows allow you to add multiple shadows to a single thing. This is useful if your IoT device has multiple state data, such as user settings, manufacturer configuration, and operational status. With named shadows, you can store different device state data on different shadows. In this case, we're going to treat them as shadows that belong to the peripheral sensors, but because they are not the thermostat themselves, we don't want them to set a desired state. These name shadows will just have a reported state. To create a named shadow, go ahead and click Add a Shadow. At this time, add a name. We'll use Temperature Sensor 1 as the name. Note that you can't use spaces in the names, but you can use dashes or underscores. Named shadows behave similarly to classic shadows. However, unlike our classic shadows, which represents the thermostat state for the thermostat itself, these will really only need to maintain a reported state and therefore will not make use of the delta state. That's it. These shadows behave just like classic shadows that we walked through previously. So in this demo, we covered what shadows are, how to create them, how to subscribe to shadow topics. We saw what actions take place when there's a delta between the desired state and the reported state. And finally, how to create named shadows. To learn more about what you can do with shadows, check out the device shadows section of the AWS IoT Core developer documentation.